Hello everyone, welcome back to this episode of Bitcoin Prediction. Uh, so as you see in my new work here, if you can parallel view this, it's um, I'm going down the list of cryptocurrencies. So let me go to something real quick. Alright, so all right, so I'm going to try to make a list of uh, the top seven cryptocurrencies. As I talk about Bitcoin all the time, it's always going to be there. But uh, I like to make something for Ethereum and have a you know a little backstory and then a prediction. I'm going to totally ignore Ripple. Anything with these little Asterisks, they're all pre mined or not even mined at all. Uh, then it'd be Litecoin, Monero, as whenever I get to the order, sometimes they'll change. Um, the classic Dash, and then I'm going to skip this and this because they have asterisks, and then Steam. So Steam gets to be up there. This is going to be an interesting story. So that's one, two, three, four. Five, six, and seven. So, rounds goes to the top seven. So, uh, anyways, uh, this is going to be one of them. Uh, let me see here. So, let's go to the charts because the price is moving. The price is moving. Looks like back to nine hundred really lifting off right here and it's lifting off again making another high what is today January 17 all right so uh, looks like uh, a lot of buying going on let me see okay I'm on a, a bit stamp I was on the one hour that's how it looks but it's just barely getting back up there and yes it did uh, pass through 888 so we're going crazy I don't know how crazy we're gonna go on the eights you know the, ins the, the only interesting thing I have to say about the the eights is um, you got to be crazy to, to go Pass up and down through the eights. That's all I gotta say. It's almost like a, it's almost like a barrier of some kind. Not a price barrier, but some kind of a, a mental barrier, or uh, maybe even a, a way of uh, filtering. You know, filtering things out. I don't know, because it, it just seems to go in and out of the eights. Yeah. Anyways, enough about that. Anyways, uh, let me see where it's where is it now? It's eight ninety eight and thirty cents. So it's starting to move up a little bit, which is good. But let's pull back a little bit more. I'm going to go into twelve now, and that's how it looks on the twelve twelve hour on Bitstamp. And you can see that one, two, three. That may be it. If that's it, I think it, I still think it's going to range. But I did notice that it's bouncing off of this average here after it went up. It took a bounce right off of it. So I'm hoping it's going to. It could top out at 9.50. But let me pull back a little bit more on the daily because I'm really watching the daily. The price moves enough where where you might have to examine the daily and the daily looks strong. It looks strong. But you always have to wait. 
you always have to wait to get a confirmed signal but anyways if you average buy you don't have to worry because you got a piece of the action and uh, that's what I like about average buying just average it out you always got a piece of the action you always get a piece of loss but overall you got a piece of it let me see here that looks really good let me pull out to, to the daily now the daily or the three day is where I'm seeing some patterns here it's one two still possible to get a three here uh, but if it doesn't then this may be restart of a first wave and then let's see where the second wave pulls back from and I guess if it goes above this price wherever it ends up uh, if it breaks above that on the third wave trying to go up that's a probably a momentum trade where you just start again if you're average costing it's it's going to become a momentum trade for you so you buy here and, and you buy above it and you, and you keep buying average costing on the way up and then after a certain point um, you could put a trailing stop I guess or, or you could just sell out if you, if you get too scared for the ride uh, but I think something like that could happen let me see one one and this is the first wait for another pullback and that's the second and then there could be a third wave going up back to it pull back from that and then get a fifth wave pushing pushing higher that's on a three day but you know you have to wait three days to get a confirmation you, you miss you miss a couple hundred but on the when you pull back on on this missing a couple hundreds just like you know a move like this from here to here let me see missing a hundred bucks let me see from here So, there. So basically, this green candle, this one candle, is about a hundred dollars. And uh, on a three-day, you could see moves like that. Uh, but if you if you put in perspective, like you know where it's going to be going, where you anticipate where it goes, it's not that bad. Not that bad at all. Moving a hundred dollars to get a confirmation. Uh, it's a longer term trade, but it pays out. It pays out. You don't have to trade as much. You just have to sit back and watch the price. Anyways, uh, another thing I'd like to talk about is um, share another video from another YouTuber that I've been watching. I and I saw this, and I just want to talk about it. Um, let me see here. This person right here. I don't know if you all seen this. Uh, this one in particular. It says uh, buying, selling Bitcoin with Paxful. Now I know pa I know about Paxful. I never trade on it. Um, and I'll talk about it a little bit because it kind of relates to my artwork and audio stereogram that I made. But this person's in Canada and uh, Alberta. Uh, I think um, I've never been there but I do go to Canada and I trade Canadian dollars so that's why I watch his videos because it's kinda kinda good to hear what's going on on the ground um, where you have an interest so anyways uh, he talks about Paxful I did make a comment on it uh, watch the video so you kinda know what's going on and uh, let me see what did I my first thing was and you'll just watch the video over 35% premium Wow 
that is quite a bit the payment method that he chose and uh, my other comments are uh, uh, I, I, have a, I, have, I have people who buy in Canada um, and tell me even when they go to the ATMs they, they're get it, they feel like they're getting raped so uh, not that they're literally getting raped I, I think they feel that the prices are a little too high um, so after watching this video and seeing the 35% premium I'm like wow that is very high um, anyways uh, he did reply and, and he said yeah I'll be honest I wasn't super excited to take that hit when making this video I much prefer uh, most other methods but I guess if you're in a jam at least there's still an option and read more uh, he says uh, I get paid in Bitcoin from side job so I don't buy much anymore don't buy any but when I do I'm usually on uh, quad rig CX it's a Canadian exchange must be like a, I don't know maybe a French Canadian exchange um, anyways I do know about those exchanges they're priced in Canadian dollars they're very thin too I mean you'll see like large wicks on those because they have very little Bitcoin um, if you ever look at a chart so I mean matter of fact let's I think uh, we'll just go uh, on the chart real quick let me see markets so there's the markets and then um, He's talking about this one right here. So this one in particular. And I'm on a I'm on a daily, but uh, if you go to an hourly, actually not too bad. It's actually well, not really. You can see you can see the see how it's really really flat right here. Uh, probably a large market order or uh, somebody had a large bit of bitcoins but uh, sometimes you'll see like large wicks on these but it looks like it, it looks pretty decent so that's the price in Canadian dollars which is I guess almost nine hundred dollars so anyways uh, that's what he's talking about and let me just get back to the to the video so um, anyways my, I, I did have a reply um, if you want to cash out let me know I have Canadian uh, dollars and looking for sellers in Canada uh, because I, I do trade and I do go to Canada um, it does help because um, that's kind of how I acquire my Canadian dollars when I go to Canada um, I sell I sell Bitcoin and that's uh, one of the reasons uh, one of the use case uh, probably one of the first use case uh, is able to take your money with you and uh, if you if you needed to use a local currency you just sell your Bitcoin use the local currency you know while you travel um, and going to Canada is not that hard. It's I can drive there. I don't have to fly. Um, it's great during the summer because it's cooler for me to go up north. Um, sometimes it's cheaper. Um, and if you incorporate it in your business, Bitcoin travel, it works out. So, um, but that's the first. That's why I use it. That's that's what it's uh, first use case. And so, um, so that's why I, I mentioned that. But I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe he won't sell. I don't know what side job he's talking about. But let me let me go into a little bit more deeper onto this, and just to talk about my experiences in in Canada. Okay, my first hand eyewitness experience going to Canada, and I, I went to Toronto. And um, you know, Toronto, Canada, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I've been there. I've, I've actually met some people and talked to people. Uh, and uh, 
one of the first things I wanted to know uh, because I've heard about this and uh, but never could confirm it for sure and this goes in the way that this gentleman put a video out there using um, a prepaid Visa card or something or prepaid MasterCard anyways um, Paxful came around when uh, Backpage uh, Visa MasterCard wouldn't uh, work with Backpage because of the uh, uh, escort section of their uh, classifieds and that's how they were getting a lot of payments for the advertisements and so um, the Backpage started to adopt Bitcoin in which um, Paxful came around during that time and they kind of really catered to the back page users that's kind of their I guess that kind of was their thing I mean I, saw, I would read articles about that and how they're taking new users and showing them how to buy Bitcoin um, but anyways before uh, before that uh, remember how I said they ex Visa MasterCard no longer does business well before they were doing business uh, people were buying prepaid Visa and MasterCards loading those up and then uh, paying for the uh, for the listing that way and so uh, if they're the same users they're very used to using go buying a prepaid MasterCard and then you know sending that to somebody else which gives them Bitcoin which that person probably just sends it right away to uh, to the address key um, to the advertisement but um, anyways so it's kind of interesting that this is how this video was set up to for the prepaid um, I I do think a lot of that does go on in Canada uh, for a very particular reason and that's um, in my uh, findings uh, I do believe that uh, um, sex work is illegal in Canada. Uh, being a sex worker is is legal over there, and so uh, that opens up a whole another related industries that service that industry. But um, and so I know that uh, I did go to Canada and ask a few people. And that seems to be the consensus. Um, so I think that's another reason why perhaps Paxful um, or these ATMs are somewhat popular in, in Canada. It's a way to pay for those um, escort advertisement listings. So there is that and I also want to let you know when I was in Canada it, this is what I saw I was uh, in Niagara Falls on the Canadian side and I saw I guess you could call them a couple um, they were kinda dressed in white and I think uh, the woman wore wings you know those like fairy wings but these were like kinda more like feathered wings uh, kind of like an angel look and the guy was also in uh, some kind of a toga and uh, but he had he was leashed and the woman was basically walking him around like he didn't go on all fours he was just but he was leashed he was on a leash <laughs> and this is at Niagara Falls and so um, I think I think your personal um, I think sex life is more open possibly possibly but not too crazy that's my opinion but I haven't nothing I can confirm but that's just simple research so I just did want to share that with you so anyways uh, check out this video um, see what this is about and uh, yeah leave a comment and talk to the guy or, or do some donations 
Um, I've seen his videos before, um, but uh, this was interesting because I, I really did want to talk about it because it did relate to some of my experiences in Canada and some of the trading, um, my experience trading and everything. Um, it's doable, it's possible, and if you frequent uh, Canada on a regular basis, um, it makes sense for you to, you know, trade Bitcoin with Canadians and vice versa. If, uh, if Canadians come down to the U.S. or travel, which often the northern borders seems to be more open than the, uh, well, they're both open borders, but uh, it seems like more people would rather go to the north, <laughs> northern border, uh, then pass, I mean, pass through the northern borders and pass through the southern borders, driving or crossing that way in particular. Uh, people would ra probably rather f fly uh, to uh, to the southern borders than, than drive past it. So, anyways, let me uh, also talk about the. Uh, let me just go back to this here. Let's go back to Bitstamp. Take a look at that final price before I, I move away. What is it? It actually moved up higher. It broke up higher again. Okay. Wow. It's breaking up higher. Yeah, I think we're on a buying frenzy now. The buying frenzy has returned. Uh, let me check out the volume. The volume is really, really small. Uh, these two volume represents that price is falling. Other than that, it's been really low on average for where the price moved up from here to there. So, anyways, that's on that. But let me get back to the artwork real quick. All right, there we go. So the whole reason I, I'm doing this is uh, I'm gonna share my memory of this and uh, if there's a dispute to my memory or an issue with how I remembered or if it happened or didn't happen let me know because uh, I'm gonna try to do another thing with the uh, whole concept of the uh, Mandela effect because some things I remember in the past, now when I go back to research them, are a little different. Um, first, I thought this was just some YouTube joke or something. But as I recall from memory, and then when I do my research, it seems to be a little different than how I remembered it. So uh, this is another experiment I'm going to be doing where I'm going to talk about how Ethereum came out to be. Or how it how it started from memory and all the things that have happened to it. And I kind of represent in this audio stereogram. If you can see this in 3D, if I can keep it still enough, you actually even see it through um, through this video. But anyways, uh, what I remember was that uh, this is Vitalik Buterin. He is the uh, remaining creator. And all of this, and um, apparently there was a team, and then they all left. Um, the, the basically, it was all funded. It was basically an ICO, uh, an initial uh, coin offering, in which he raised a lot of the the money through Bitcoin. So you have Bitcoin in the in the background there, and he before he created Ethereum, he he was uh, a Bitcoin user, really. Uh, uh, that's where he got a lot of his ideas from, to do all this, and, and then some of his own. Anyways, um, the price was kind of high at that time, and they were just taking um, crowdfunding, and I don't know what else to say. It's crowdfunding, uh, accepting Bitcoin, uh, I guess in return for maybe some coins, you know, that kind of concept. Um, so it took about a year and a half. 
the price went down. They were selling it so they can live or fund themselves or, you know, eat while they're writing up the code for all this uh, Ethereum. And it was a great idea. A lot of people dug it. A lot of Bitcoiners got into it. Um, hence, that's why they got all, they, they crowdfunded their Bitcoin. Um, and so, I mean, anyways, I, fi I finally came out. I remember the day it came out. And it started selling. It started dropping. And uh, it got into the pennies. And uh, it was like that for, for a very, very, very long time. And then um, this is how I've heard, Other than reading articles about it and some people here and there talking about it, that's all I remember. Uh, I wasn't into it or I didn't participate in the, in the uh, crowd sale. And then uh, I do remember, I'm just giving you my memory, uh, I don't know if you know uh, Craig Grant, he's also another YouTuber, uh, I remember he made contact, left a, a note, comment, and then that's how I found out about him. And he started also coming out on the um, daily search, I, I do a, a YouTube search of Bitcoin and today, and I, it's always interesting to see new people, new faces, and... Uh, more has come on since then, I mean, really. But uh, I started watching him, and that's when I first heard somebody actually getting into Ethereum. Um, but uh, that was after he was really into Bitcoin and all that, but then all of a sudden he got into Ethereum, and then other people, uh, I remember Trayvon James, which apparently uh, Craig Knight knows, or they know each other, um, but then he got into Ethereum, then crypto came out, and crypto was into Ethereum, so he started making uh, videos, um, and it, things got really exciting. Um, price started moving up. Uh, it started basically going into second place in the uh, coin market cap. Watch, let me see if I'll, I'll show you on that here. So basically, went up to second place. Uh, for a long time, it was Litecoin. Um, you know, Ripple was always somewhere, but it shouldn't really be here. Uh, but for a long time, it was Litecoin, and then all of a sudden, Ethereum took that place right here. And uh, man, it was in the billion. It was almost a billion dollars market cap. It's never reached that since then. But uh, anyways, so here's what happened from my memory. Now if there's any dispute or any anything I missed or any anything you want to want to add, uh, please do so in the comments. And so uh, the price was going up and then a lot of people started talking about it. Other people started uh, getting into it. I saw a lot of videos on about Ethereum. Um, you know, uh, it's proof of work now but it will go to proof of stake and they're talking about it. I don't know, Homestead, and this, they had different names for different phases of it, um, but eventually, it got to a point where all of a sudden they could, uh, you could use these uh, tokens, the gas, um, to do dApps, and one of the first use applications was the DAO, and the DAO was supposed to be this autonomous, decentralized autonomous organization where you would just put all your money in this thing and everyone would get a, a vote to how much interest they had in the DAO to do things where the money would go. And so the only way you could fund it was with your gas tokens, which were treated like currency tokens, right? Or, or redeemable tokens or something like that. And so a lot of people put a lot of Ethereum into DAO, and some people traded their Bitcoins for DAO, uh, for Ethereum to get into it, and it got huge, like 150, I don't know, was it 150 million? Or, yeah, 150 million, somewhere around there. I don't think it was a 150 billion or trillion, I think it was 150 million, it was a lot. It was a lot for a crowdfund. 
And so basically it was a crowdfund for a crowdfund. Anyways, um, for those who don't know what happened, the the DAO was the DAO was nothing but code, software code. And someone was able to find a way to exploit a weakness where uh, they were approved of themselves to receive X amount of uh, DAO tokens, which represented Ethereum tokens because they were tied to the Ethereum that was loaded into the DAO. So basically, you traded your Ethereum to get DAO tokens, and that DAO token represented one Ethereum. So it was one to one. So basically, you were. So the DAO tokens were transferred into someone or something. Uh, to another child DAO, which would be released in about 30 days, and so um, it was a big mistake. <laughs> it was a it was a big disaster. This project. So, and this is where the uh, the fork comes in, and this is why you see it, the the uh, Ethereum symbol and the other Ethereum symbol, which is Ethereum Classic. And this is uh, Ethereum, I guess people, uh, E T H E T C. So, and this fork right here represents that event in which um, they had to reverse all those transactions to the point where no, the DAO never happened. The DAO didn't exist. So everybody got their Ethereum back. And then at that time, um, something happened where a group of people thought that that was wrong and they should continue on with the original chain and that's where the Ethereum Classic is and I, I kind of like that symbol if you can let me see if you can see that a little bit better if you're audio if you're parallel viewing this it's uh, you can see it through here it's kind of well it just comes out right at you anyways um, so that is the Ethereum Classic symbol in there. So that's what I got. And so that's what that's what happened. And that's why you got the two forks, two parallel chains, one running uh, on its own, the original, um, I wouldn't say the original code, but I would say the, well, it's, it's not original, but uh, it's the, the chain that's by itself, I guess. Uh, that's it's it's the fork of the original Ethereum, and then the original Ethereum back there kind of runs along up there, up on top, parallel forks, and uh, I, I it's kind of fitting that it's up on top with Bitcoin up there because uh, it is original concept. A lot of Bitcoiners did get into uh, Ethereum, um, thought it was a great technology, uh, but when it forked. They didn't really agree with uh, that fork, so that's where you got the two Ethereum's. But technically, uh, uh, Vitalik uh, Buterin is actually the creator of both of these forks, technically. So that's why they're both in there. Anyways, so I thought you should all know about this if you're new to any of this. Um, if I'm wrong on any of this or if, if something you want to add or update people leave a comment um, Google does a great not Google uh, YouTube does a great job of filtering spam so if it shows up then it, it's gonna stay up I'm not gonna alter it or change it uh, so uh, anything goes so anyways this is my 3d audio stereogram art and uh, also, uh, the colors in the background are colors of uh, flag of Russia, where apparently he was born, uh, but he also uh, moved to Canada and is now um, in Switzerland. So if you're wondering where all your Bitcoin money or Ethereum money is, it's probably in Switzerland somewhere, <laughs> at least the cash side. But anyways, um, hope you all enjoyed this. Oh, my prediction. Uh, I almost forgot. So here's my prediction for uh, Ethereum. Um, I do predict uh, Ethereum to do very well. It, it will 
it will make people a lot of money, those who have invested in it. But uh, it would only do well in the old world. Um, once they go to proof of stake, they'll still be cemented with the old world. And, uh, you know, once that happens, they're, that's where they're going to be forever. You know, because that, the, 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 the way it's, the Ethereum, the ETH Ethereum, seems to be like uh, what's, what the old world has to offer right now is just that you're getting into, uh, into the cryptocurrency space, just a new frontier of the same way of doing things where uh, you have interest does anyone control it? Um, I won't say anyone controls it, but definitely there is uh, there is some control over it. Who's in control? I, I don't know. A lot of people say it's this guy. That may be true, but um, you know how long until when? And then who's got who's going to be taking over from there? So uh, it's a similar situation to the old world, right? Uh, you get paid to hold on to the to the tokens uh, no work is needed other than to acquire these and then um, you know it's just who knows it's still an experiment so that's uh, this part here um, so that's that's kinda what my prediction is as far as a classic I, I don't know I'll make another episode where I do uh, something on classic but this one is for Ethereum just giving you a little brief history. Uh, it will do well in the old world uh, with old world fundamentals and old world companies. And yes, you can make a lot of money. But remember, it's just, um, I believe a new world is, is, is uh, will be replacing the old world. So uh, you don't want to get left behind. Uh, if you can make money, and eventually buy bitcoins with it. <laughs> I guess that's that may work. I don't, I don't know. Um, right now, it's traded like a commodity, just like Bitcoin is. Um, the weird part is with the coin. From what I can see, it seems to be a pay for play. All right, you have to you have to pay to play. So that's why this concept of gas. Like if you want to use an app, you have to spend your tokens to use this app and that's how the, your tokens are used or burned that's why there there's no uh, limit uh, that's why there's no limit on the uh, there's no cap on how many uh, ethereum tokens are are gonna be created so the idea is to hoard a lot and whatever comes out of it uh, the extra ethereum from holding you get to spend those, or, or if you just keep them and just be wise about the spending, let the price go up if it's if that's possible for the price to go up. Um, you know, something like what we have now. You know, it's just digitized. So that's kind of the the thing about how I feel about it. Um, other than that, I mean, I, I I never held any Ethereum. No one's ever offered me any Ethereum, uh, so that's that's kind of where it stands for me. Um, other than that, I mean, we're looking at two parallel universes running side by side, and it'll be interesting to see what what happens. Um, so, anyways, that concludes my episode. Uh, feel free to uh, like, dislike. Uh, leave a comment or even do a video response. Until next time, stay tuned. Bye.